Hi, I'd like to give you a brief introduction to the field of biosensors. Biosensors have grown from a niche academic discipline with a couple of minor products in the 1970s to a major commercial area with thousands of researchers active in the field. Moreover, we've only exploited a fraction of their real potential in clinical diagnostics, pharmaceutical development and application, food and process control, defence and security. Biosensors are analytical devices incorporating a biological or biologically derived sensing element. The usual aim is to generate a digital electronic signal which is proportional to a specific analyte or group of analytes. The result is simple, easy to use analytical devices that can be used by the non-specialist to deliver sophisticated analytical results in decentralised locations, in the field or even in the home. The biological components, such as enzymes, antibodies or nucleic acids, may be extracted from nature, they may then subsequently be chemically modified or they may be synthesised de novo. Transducers include the widely used electrochemical and optical devices alongside less frequently used piezoelectric, thermometric or magnetic transducers. The world market for biosensors, based on our own assessment at Cranfield University for 2009, has now reached an impressive 13 billion US dollars. The market now has the dimensions of a major consumer product. Despite the great diversity of opportunity offered by biosensors, however, nearly nine-tenths of the market is still accounted for by glucose measurement. This extraordinary dominance of the field by a single biosensor type is driven by the exceptional needs of people with diabetes combined with the success of biosensors in meeting their demands for an appropriate product. This combination of identifiable need along with a suitable technological solution is the key to success. Diabetes is an immense and growing public health issue. It is the fastest growing chronic disease in the world, currently afflicting 2% of the world's population and it is expected to double in prevalence by 2050. There is no known cure, and management comprises monitoring and control, aided by the use of personal glucose meters, drugs and diet. Home testing was revolutionized by the introduction of electrochemical biosensors in 1987, and the subsequent refinement of capillary fill technology introduced in the mid-90s. In 1993, the results of the Diabetes Complications and Control Trial, the DCCT, were published and this study proved the value of intensive control in reducing the complications associated with diabetes. A retrospective analysis of the market shows a significant inflection point in the growth of glucose testing at exactly this time and this attests to the power of market pull, the DCCT, combined with timely, convenient and effective technology, electrochemical biosensors. Alongside in vitro testing, the independent visions of Clark in the USA, Stuart Updike in the USA and Shashiri in Japan of an implantable continuous use device for use by patients finally achieved commercial reality with the launch of Minimed Medtronic's Guardian in August 2005, closely followed by Dexcom's STS system and Abbott's Freestyle Navigator in March 2006 and 2008 respectively. These devices all still require daily finger stick calibrations using conventional meters and have use lives of between three and seven days, which are somewhat limited. However, companies are currently very active in striving to overcome these limitations. The next 
most significant biosensor in commercial terms was Biacore's Affinity Sensor based on Surface Plasma Resonance, or SPR. This was pioneered in conjunction with Linköping University. This innovation established a totally different market for expensive research instruments delivering sophisticated fluid handling and data manipulation to support the biosensor chip inside. This was accompanied by successes with critical care analyzers, light activated potentiometric systems or LAPS and DNA chips. Food and environmental sensors have not so far yielded the economic returns associated with some of these successes, but biochemical oxygen demand sensors and toxicity monitors have already played important roles. New opportunities in food safety monitoring have to survive the rigours of the harsh economic restraints on food production, and many innovative ideas may not see the light of day due to marketing pressures in an image-conscious industry with tiny economic margins. With over 6,000 papers published on biosensors in 2009 alone, a plethora of patents and a myriad of new product development announcements, the question arises of where do we go next in this rapidly expanding field. Visions of the future include exploitation of nanotechnology, the creation of plastic bioelectronics and the development of synthetic living systems. One thing remains certain, biosensors are here to stay and will play a clear role in monitoring and diagnostics into the future.